All right, so now I have what I think is my final frame that I will carry over to extend the opening sequence. <coughs> Hold down Option, go to Layer, while holding down Option, click on Merge Visible. I already have my Zoom selected. Then hit Command C. Go to my stage, paste it in. Then I have to move it four clips, clicks up because of my cropping. All right, now let's output this and see how it works. So make frames from layers. Now I have a lot more frames before the sun is fully in view. And then before I start zooming and start making the changes. 35 frames in total instead of 24, which was what I output in my last animation. Now the reason you don't want to have 90 frames or so is each frame takes up a lot of memory. Basically at the resolution we're going to use, each frame takes up about one megabyte. So 30 meg 35 megabytes is something, but it's a lot better than, than 90. I set them at 0.3, my default, play forever. Let's see how it goes. It's a little fast, let's see. <laughs> Always have too much. So the only problem is that the mouth is opening so much. Ah, why can I learn? All I really need is this atmosphere to change. I don't need his mouth to open all the way. Ah, annoying. All right. Let's take all those out. Let's make those little changes. Not a big deal. And this is all just being really picky. I love what the mist is doing. I just want to be able to pay attention to it. All right, so. Let's fix frame layer five first. Keep that mouth closed. And maybe just only ever go to a squint. Problem is if you make a lot of assets, you want to use them all the time. You don't need to. In fact, you can even keep his head, his eye squinted for a few frames. Nothing wrong with that. All right, everything else the same. This is why they have to give you free donuts, free bagels when you work as an animator. Four times. I can't get away with that much. Yeah, let's let's try outputting it now. I think just that, that open mouth. I was thinking, why not open the mouth? I have it. This might be enough. Make frames from layers. Set it all to 0.3. Maybe have this first frame last longer. 
0.5, have this one last 0.4. That will set us in a little bit more slowly. Have this one last 0.35, you can go up to two decimals. Then it goes in a 0.3. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm sure there's other things I can critique about it, but that'll do. I kind of like slowing down the beginning. Maybe I can even get away with like 0.6. It's basically having two, two frames and 0.5. So once you have your final frames, it can be worth tinkering with the timing. It's going to probably go a little bit faster once it's all not full resolution. I like having a little bit more time for that sun to establish itself. Okay. Hopefully it's an unexpected. I just want to test it with this one not in the mix. <laughs> That extreme zoom. Yeah, I think it's a little smoother without it. You still have the shaky camera at that point. But yeah. Good. So sometimes subtlety is helpful. Okay, so now that I've got it, I save it at full resolution because we're still at. Um, you know, 11 by 11 inches by 350, basically. Save it. It's a huge file. It's one and a half gigabytes. But I could save this as a movie file if I wanted to play it with millions of colors and at full resolution. And I can show you that after we get the, the GIF done. But let me uh, save this as a new GIF. And so I'll play them side by side so you can see the difference. And I think extending that beginning really helped, especially as it loops, to get you kind of comfortable with what you're looking at. Okay, so now, now that I've saved it, I'm going to change the image size down to 8 by 8 inches by 150. Really making Photoshop work. I can save and close my assets at this point. So all the rest of the work just happens with this, with my stage. So while that's doing that, See what I can do. Photoshop won't let me do too much. Now a lot of the the things we've animated are subtle when you see them just panel by panel. So when we output a final storyboard, we want to find the big changes that happen. And I'll have the consistency of the, of the zooms and the, the sun going down. All of that will help it 
to feel like sequential storytelling. But in this animation, I didn't move my creature too much other than having a blink and open its mouth and tilt its head. Um, I use Puppet Warp just to change its body positioning a little bit, getting ready for its head to pop off. But having the sun and the mist just animate a little bit frame to frame gives you enough of a sense of, of time passing that you should all feel fairly believable. Hopefully engaging. Now in the storyboard, in the final storyboard, which is like a comic book of your finished frames, you won't be able to tell that the mist has changed a little bit. You have to pick kind of the big moments. And that's why I have 35 frames here showing the, the transitions, but your, the storyboard will only have nine frames. All right, so there it is, the smaller resolution. From that, I can say File, Export, Save for Web, It should remember my settings. It went from a gig and a half of memory to only to fewer than 200 megabytes of memory, where each layer is only four megabytes at millions of colors in Photoshop. It's only eight by eight inches by 150, which is still larger than a high def screen in terms of definition. It just depends on how many inches big it is but it's larger than this native screen I'm working on. <coughs> yeah, I really should close my assets file to help speed all this along. But the important thing is I saved my Photoshop stage. And that's where all my finished products of the animation will come from. So as the GIF, the problem is it has to reduce it to only 256 colors. But I like perceptual at full 256 colors, um, bicubic smoother. Save it. I'm going to just add something to the name so it doesn't overwrite my old one. So I'll just say dash new at the end so we can compare. And then I am going to go back in my history before I change the image size. But I also saved it there, so I could just close it and not save it. Even with all my, my frames output, that's fine, because they're finalized now. Now for my assets. I'm not sure when the last time I saved it was. Look at my history. Yeah, not, not since back there. So deselect, get rid of this layer, and let's save it and close it. And then work, look at our uh, GIFs. So here's my new GIF, here's my old GIF. Open them both with Chrome, with a web browser, otherwise they won't animate. And let's swoop one out. Come on. Let's see, once they fully load, they'll be a little glitchy until they fully load. Let's see which one is more rewarding. I'll shrink them down a little bit. As you can see, their resolution is just fine. Okay, so this is the difference. Yeah, having that little bit of time really helps. That's the new one on the right. So without it, just there's too much going on all the time, especially with the camera moves. So you have to choose what you're going to animate in each moment. I just didn't give enough time originally to set it up. So I'm, I'm happier with this. All right, good.